This is a MetaQuest 3 from Meta, and this is a an attachment, a separate attachment that I bought. It's like 30 bucks. That just makes for a much more comfortable head feeling. I was coming off the MetaQuest 1. There would be a lot of front weight on my cheeks. It would look ridiculous when I took it off. Well worth the $30 to, to do this. First things first, you're going to put on the headset. Next thing that you're going to do is... Tighten the heck out of it. We are gonna grab our two handsets. You can thread your handset, it doesn't really matter. And first thing I'm gonna do is, we are now recording. You can now see what I see, which is great. First thing that we're gonna do is open up the browser. I already have all three windows open. The first window is lovable.dev, which you can see there. Second window is ChatGPT. Third window is API keys. So first thing I'm gonna do is just show you that when you are building in VR, you can do it with this like small window or you can do it with the humongous takeover. I can come in here, I can have a conversation with advanced voice mode. Hey, I'm thinking about building a brand new app and I want it to use the GPT-40 API. Do you have any ideas of something really simple that I can build to show some folks how it works? That sounds like a fun project. A simple idea might be a chatbot that answers questions on a specific topic. For example, you could create a travel assistant that provides tips, suggests places to visit, and answers travel-related questions. This would show off the API's ability to provide detailed and helpful responses. This is the conversation, and the reason that I'm doing advanced voice mode and not typing back and forth to ChatGPT is because typing in VR supremely sucks. So if I go back to Lovable, and you're going to need to pay for this, but it is well worth, and then I'm going to dictate and say, I want to build an app that allows me to type in things that I like in City 1, and then lets me select City 2, and then gives me things that I might like in City 2 that are related to City 1. I just hit the create button. Now, Lovable is completely no code. I'm sure that there will be engineers yelling at me saying that I didn't actually build anything, that I relied on AI for everything, and you would be correct, okay? But I am directing the AI what to do. You could also say that someone who's using ChatGPT is never writing anything, okay? But I don't know, is that like, is that a fight that matters anymore? I really don't know. Am I trying to make this public and have 50,000 users on it? No. If I did, I would absolutely hire an engineer just to make sure that things are okay. So all of this code, it is writing. You can even see that it is coming up with its own UX. It's coming up with its own captioning. You can see here where it says, I want to explore, that it is writing all that, that captioning. And so we're just going to see what this preview is that it spits back. And usually between um, each kind of prompt, it'll take a couple minutes. Okay, I like it. It's like a little boring. And so we can prompt it back back and forth, and I might say something like, I really like the color purple. If you could instead use light purple and dark purple throughout this design, that would be a lot better. Great, okay, now it's a little bit more purple, and I can even say, no, I want the entire thing to be purple, make the entire background lavender, make the font for City Matchmaker dark purple, make every single thing so, so, so purple. Cool. And suddenly, the whole thing is purple. Am I specifying the exact purple? No. Am I specifying the size of each of these boxes? No. So you'll see that if I were to put a city in here now, it would like fake its response or not even have a real response because I haven't actually given it any sort of AI to mess with. Right? It has its own little brain that it's using to code, but it does not have an AI that it can access to be able to build this app. So eventually, I'm going to have to give it my own API key so that it can charge me you know, a couple cents to be able to kind of use an AI in the background of an app. If it was using its own, it would cost the company a ton of money. I want you to call the GPT-40 API in order to generate the recommendations based on what I put in. I want to store the API locally and I need you to give me space to input an API key. Voice dictation is not perfect perfect, so just so that it doesn't actually mess up. I want you to call the GPT-40 API and so it should prompt, it should either prompt me to give it my API key or it should spin up just like this little blank spot at the top of the page. But we shall see. I'm actually, I'm excited. I'm like, I want this app. 
And it's so purpley. Perfect. So now it says that they've added in this little API key thing. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into our API key page. This is just my personal one. Create secret new key. We're going to call it Grimace because it's so purple. Grimace test. Cool. Project, just hit default. Create the secret key. You are going to then copy this key. If you hit done without copying it, there is no way to get it back. For right now, just hit copy. And again, as I mentioned, um, I am going to delete this API key so you cannot use it. We're gonna paste in that key and I'm gonna hit save key. Now, when I submit the uh, thing that we were doing before, I am going to, to have it ask the exact same question, but we're gonna be answering it with AI. Fairy build, great. We're gonna add that one and I'm gonna add Haze. So now that I have entered all of that in and typed in that I want to explore New York, now when I hit find similar things, it should call the API, do the similar with, and pop it back out. Okay, now I can look at that and it's like giving way too, like I don't like the layout. I want the answer, the South Street Seaboard or whatever, to be in that title. Um, Hayes Valley, Williamsburg, that's kind of funny. And then Golden Gate, Brooklyn Bridge. Okay, seems great. I'm gonna instead say, when you give the recommendations, I want the header to not only say similar to Hayes Valley or similar to whatever I just asked for, but I also want a key answer in bold headline. And then I want the um, description of it to be bulleted. You'll see, like I'm not, dictating this perfectly. I'm not thinking too hard about each thing that I'm, you know, asking for. I'm really just kind of loosely describing what I want. Okay, this is what I was hoping for. You can see that it is trying to fix itself. I do not have to know exactly what the error is, though if I looked into it, fine, I could look it up. But if I'm a complete non-coder and I don't know how to code at all, I'm instead just going to click the try to fix button. That submits into Lovable with what the error is. So you can see it'll give the exact error message into Lovable and be like, try and fix this. And when I first, first, first did this, we probably ran into, I'll say like 10 errors or something, only because I was adding more and more and more. So you just gotta work with it. So we're just gonna do Hayes Valley again. Though that is kind of actually a funny one. And I said that I liked Trisha's green, which is like this teeny, teeny, teeny little park. If this says Central Park, then I will be disappointed because Patricia's green is like basically a dog park. It's like a hundred square feet, it's tiny. Let's see, New York City. So let's see. The High Line, that's no bueno. San Francisco. Oh, if I could remember, like, one restaurant. All right, let's see. Generating recommendations. Found two. All right, very building. Chelsea Market. Absolutely. That makes total sense. You can even see, like, I'm annoyed that, like, this uh, double asterisk, it's marked down for bolding. Uh, you can see the same thing is happening in the bullets. So I can say there's some weird stuff happening with markdown language when I get the AI response that is doing weird bolding and bullet marks. So if you could just remove all markdown when the responses come back, that would be great. If you are creating an app, what I would recommend is starting really, 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 really small. Start with just the layout without adding in the AI stuff, then add in the AI stuff, then you can tweak the layout, etc., etc. So let's just run this again and let's add in uh, mission murals. We're gonna generate recommendations. And now hopefully that prompt is going to kick back. Yay, okay, now we're not getting the weird markdown double asterisk double asterisk things, explore Chelsea Market, similar to Hayes Valley, Soho, I don't know. And then Mission Murals to go to Bushwick. If we wanted to publish it, we can just with that publish button up there. If you wanted to set it in private, you can. So if I say deploy, um, you could also mark it as public. I'm obviously not doing that right now. And now the site is published. Now you can see that it generates its own link 
citytastematcher.lovable.app. And then if I now open that, now I see the actual app. I could um, make this public. I can make it so that anyone could access it, that they could put in their own API key and use it themselves. But now you can literally create any app you want and put it out there. You could even make it blue or green. It doesn't have to be purple. All right. I hope that that was fun, and you could even go back and forth with ChatGPT asking for more ideas. Whatever, you could have multiple windows. Gotta get funky with it, but hope that helps, and happy building!